Welcome back to Cars and Farms. We're on day two of the chicken pin build. So far, we got the main structure, main framework done. If you missed any of this, you can go check part one again. But uh, yeah, it's really coming out nice. Today we're gonna hit the roof, we're gonna wire the whole thing in, and uh, add all the little stuff, latches, water, food. But first, we gotta check on the chickens, see if they got us any eggs. Hang there. Sometimes they like to run out between your feet. They're used to getting let out, but let's see. Eggs, you guys do anything? Oh yeah. There we go. Two nice size eggs. Not the biggest eggs in the world, but not the biggest chickens in the world either. But that'll soon change. Still got plenty of food. Water has a little bit of stuff in it. Let me dump that out real quick. Wash. There we go. Happy. Well, we got two eggs ready to finish up this chicken project. We're gonna go ahead and head off to get sheet metal, roofing screws. Gonna need some door latches, fence wire, all the little stuff. Another board for the bottom to attach the wire to. All that good little stuff. So we'll see how it goes, but. Hopefully these guys will be happy with the new neighbors they're getting. And the smaller, the small big Indian Giants will be happy with their new home. Let's go hook up the trailer and head off to go get some tin and go pick up some supplies. Alright, we're here at Tractor Supply. I'm going to run inside, see if I can get some roof panels, some chicken wire, chicken feed, all the good chicken stuff that I need for my chickening of this chicken palace I'm building. So. We'll see how it goes. I should have everything I need here. Well, we got most of everything. Didn't have everything, need some roof panels still, but we got the chicken wire, and then we got chicken bucket for feed, automatic water, hose splitter, and a hose. So, it looks like we're off to Lowe's now to get us some roof panels, and then we'll be back in the house. Well, we're back. Successful trips. All around, trash supply, Ace, Lowe's, got it all. So, that's what we picked up from Lowe's. We have some three sheets of tin, a roof cap, and a couple deck boards that are pressure treated, so they'll go around the bottom, so they won't quite rot out as fast as normal wood would. And uh, I'm about to throw all this stuff over the fence. I'll meet you in the backyard. Well, back in the backyard, got it all unloaded, tossed over the fence. Now, got some tools, got a ladder, got the tin. Plan is to jump up here on the roof. Well, not me jump up on the roof, but I'm going to climb up this ladder, start sliding the, the tin up here. I'll probably throw one piece against that backside, screw that down, and just keep working my way out. I only got three sheets of tin shouldn't take so long and then once we get the tin up I'll put the the bottom boards around the bottom here where I can staple the wire to here and over there and uh, I'll get a time lapse going and we'll see how how quick I can get it done it's hot out here got a cowboy hat on keep the sun out of my eyes and be ready to go and chicken hopefully appreciate it
may have overestimated or underestimated what I needed here. I'll take you over here to take a look. Well, we got three good sheets and we need one more. So I guess I'm not that great at math. I didn't, well, technically I didn't even measure it. So kind of my fault, but what is here is looking pretty good. Got three sheets up. This will give me some shade to work under now. So next step, we're gonna go ahead and put the board here to here. That's gonna be that pressure treated deck board. And then we're gonna run another one from here to here, over here, another pressure treated. Then we'll start, we'll start the wire over here in this far back corner, put it on the inside, staple it, and then I'll stretch it all the way out to here to here and wrap it around and go this way and go all the way around one continuous piece and then we gotta it's only gonna cover about half and we're gonna have to step up and do another row all the way around it again but not that big of a deal it's just gonna take some time this wire is a pain always a pain to unroll they roll it so tight so we're gonna unroll it i'm gonna probably stretch it out going that way in the yard and then start stapling it to the boards and these staples they they're just a hand stapler they don't stick very well, so you got to kind of go back with a hammer and tap them all in. I'll kind of show you how it lays out whenever I get it. I'll go ahead and get the wire stretched out for you and get it wrapped around and get the stapling. And I'll bring you back when I start stapling it up. Alright, well I got the chicken wire spread back up here. Let me turn the camera around and show you what's going on. What I did was I stapled it along this edge here. That was the leading edge of the thing. It's still real floppy. I haven't stapled anything up. But the good thing is that chicken wire, when you buy it, it comes wrapped in wire. Pretty good wire, you know, not going to hold down uh, anything important, but it works for tying this wire up. So on this corner, I'll push this up against the fence and wire tie it in about 10 places down the side of that. Then I'll staple this side to this fence post all the way along there and same on each other fence post. Staple it on this side, on this side, and then I'll pull it real tight and staple it along the door side, and then I'll cut the excess off right here, and then I'll go around the bottom. I'll put staples all along the bottom of this, and then it should be secure enough for these chickens. I do still have a gap up here, all the way around the top, and uh, that's just going to take whatever excess here. I have to cut panels. And fill in any gaps I got above the door. Above this side's the major part. The rest should be pretty close, but let me uh, grab the staple gun and get to stapling. Well, I got this side wired up. Got it pulled up tight. Managed to pull it all the way to the top and staple it across the top there. So that's one less step trying to wire that up or trying to fill it in with another piece of wire. I stapled down all the posts right now, all down each side. This side got a little little wave in the fence right there but that'll be all right because i still have to staple the bottom down here to the baseboard so i'll pull that down and, and staple right to it but all i'm using is a simple hand trigger staple gun no big deal it gives you a good wrist good wrist and forearm workout using this thing but i've just been going along pulling the fence tight pulling it down and then just stapling it to it and just keep working all the way down as you can see there's some staples on this side but it's a it's a hot one out here so I'm gonna get back to it and uh, once I get all this stapled out and I'm gonna try to pull this out like I said and then we'll get to uh, mounting the door and screening the door in get the wire all finished up here I staple along the bottom down here and where that wrinkle was right here I took a, you just take a claw hammer, and you can see this twist right here, put your claw hammer in there and just turn it, and I turned it here and down there, and that just kind of pulls the wire, it's kind of a fence laying trick, uh, you can use it to tighten fence panels and barbed wire, don't tighten barbed wire too much, it'll break though, but a uh, high tensile wire, fence wire like that, it's a pretty handy trick, it's coming here inside the chicken coop. And if you look right here, this is the gap we got left all the way along here that I need to fill in. 
I'm just going to take this roll of wire here and cut sections out of it and then just staple it along the top and then hang it down and uh, it, I'm going to go ahead and get that done once that's done all I have left is the door over here I have to put the door frame hinges the latch and uh, screen the door and then it's done but probably after I get this mess hung up here probably gonna call it a day it's already about 5 6 30 so uh, I'm ready for dinner it's hot out here ready to call it a day tomorrow we will I'll head back to Lowe's and get another panel for up here and any other odds and ends I might think of overnight but I'd say pretty successful day working on the chicken pen and uh, I'll catch back up with you guys as soon as I get this hung and I'll set the door in place and then I'll call it a day. Well, we got the gap all filled up here. It came out pretty nice all the way along. Just tucked it in. You usually cut the ends of the wire right here. Cut the ends of these and just tuck them up underneath. Roll them over one time and back around and that that seems to hold pretty good. Then I also ran through with some extra wire through it to kind of help reinforce it some. I don't think it's going to need it. No chickens really jump up that high and then attack the wire over and over. So, But next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to lean this door in place right here. I'm going to lean it in place to this hole. And I'm going to call it a day because it is getting hot. I've done sweat down all the way to the end of my shorts here because it's about probably 95 today probably cooled off to about 89 today and it is hot i mean i'm just just dripping dripping sweat so we're calling it a day it's about six o'clock i think it came out all right i mean good enough for some chickens so tomorrow i'll go get that panel first thing in the morning and then we'll get this door hung and then hopefully we'll be able to release the chickens the giant Indian chickens tomorrow afternoon or tomorrow sometime whenever this gets done who knows and uh, we'll release it in there and uh, should be good to go so look forward to seeing you guys tomorrow welcome back day two day two of part two I guess uh, yesterday we were missing a sheet of tin went this morning picked that up right over here by the fence Got the last piece of tin and a roof cap to uh, seam these two roofs together. Then we're gonna work on the door, get that finished up, get us put the screen on it, we'll go ahead and install that, put the latches, the hinges. But first, we need to check on the chickens, make sure we dump out their water, get their food, check for any good eggs. So let's go ahead and do that now. Stay back in there. Oh, stay in. Little things like run out. Let's see. There. Alright, well first we'll check for eggs. Nope. 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 No eggs today. Girls. Better get to work. I'm seeing you, Tina. Tina's a little white one. One of them. Tina and Turner. They better get to work. Because we need more eggs. But food. Still fun. Check the water. Water's a little dirty. I'll just dump the dirt out of it. Give it a good rinse. I love these automatic dog waterers. They make it real easy to work with. Dump it out, look at the water, good to go. So now, I'm gonna go ahead and set you guys down. You guys will see me put this last piece of tin on here, and then we'll start working on the door. Back in a minute.
Turns out that I just got a little bit south, just a little bit north of the Georgia line. frame. I'm going to go ahead and try to sit it up here, get it as level as possible, screw in the door hinges, and then we'll go from there. Alright, I got the frame just about where I want it. You see it here, I put down some red brick. That's just to keep the chickens from trying to dig under this door and give the door something to shut up on top of, and it keeps it level as I try to install it to this frame here. But the door, I'm going to have to add a couple blocks piece of scrap wood a block here I'll screw it to it and this will give it somewhere for that hinge to mount that way it lays flush with this side over here as you can see that other side how I built that one but I have to do that top and then at the bottom and then we're gonna stick one over here on this side for where the door latch will hook to so let me get you let me get it set up I'll show you how it's done well no surprise, camera shut off again. It's, uh, guess what? It's hot again. It's always hot. But, let me show you what we got done here. Got the door frame just about where I want it. I got the block for the latch right here. And then the two blocks, top, bottom for the hinges. And it's sitting up on those bricks down there. So keeping it nice and level. We'll compare that to the other side here. You know, not too... Not too much different. This door opens this way. This door is also going to open this way. Just to give you a little more room to walk in and out of. I like the doors opening the same way. I think that's going to look good. But, uh, yeah, not too shabby. Let me break out the hinges and I'll go ahead and screw the hinges in and get the door latch on. And uh, I'll see you when I get back. Well, the door is hung. I got a couple put... If you got extra holes, just go ahead and fill them with screws. Some people only hang two or three. But hinge there, hinge at the bottom, and then I even added a little door handle, give you something to grab onto. Because when the wire's in here, it's kind of hard to get a hold of it without putting your fingers through the gate and getting a hold of it. But I say it opened pretty well. Not too shabby. Open, close. I did have to tap the bricks in down there to get them level so it'd shut nice and then scoop out all this dirt here which I'll go back and fill along these boards so chickens don't see light and try to dig out but looks so so far so good and so there's a little gap in between but these uh Indian Giants they ain't gonna squeeze through that gap that's for sure and if it's a problem you can always take a board and put a 2 by 4 take and overlap it about like this and that'll close that gap right up so these chickens I'm not too worried about. I'm not going to be raising baby chicks in here. Just normal sized chickens. Well, abnormal sized chickens on this side and normal sized chickens over there. But yeah, they're, they don't mind sitting in there scratching around in this hot weather. Better than building a chicken fence, I'll tell you that, and a chicken pen. But all right, let me uh, screen the door in. And then when you start working on hanging their feeder with some wire, getting their water hooked up. I got a T down in here, the T off of this line, and then I'll add another hose here to that water, and we'll get them some fresh water. I'll use this old concrete weight here to set the feeder on, so they don't get as much dirt in it. So, but I'll start getting all that hooked up and show you when it's all done. Well, happy to say this chicken pen is finished. 
the Indian Giants are going to have a good place to live out at least up to a year, year and a half old. Then I'm probably going to move them out to some property, but build an even bigger chicken pen. But this will work while they're juveniles. And let me just show you what we got here. We got the feeder just strapped up to the roof truss with an old ratchet strap. I like to reuse everything I can. But I've got it set pretty high off the ground, as you can tell, because these are pretty tall chickens and I got real long neck, so they like their food elevated a little more. Got their water set up, the double line, got the door all screened in. It's gonna be a pretty good little palace here. I took uh, some of these old, I took some of these old T-posts here and laid along the inside to keep them from wanting to dig out. Then the outside I took and piled dirt all against that backboard all the way around, so that shouldn't be a problem. It's uh, I think it's complete now. This chicken pen's only missing a couple things. That's some chickens. So let's go get them. Let's try to pull their pen over here. Might actually put their whole little pen inside this pen if it fits through the door. If not, I'm gonna have to just hope I can get them all in here by hand. Let's see. Well, just tried to move their little pen over here and pulling on it, it's falling apart. So the best way, I can't really get in these little doors and uh, get an arm through there and grab these chickens. They're a lot quicker than they look. I'm gonna go ahead and release them out of this pen. I know it sounds crazy. And then I'm gonna herd them all the way over here. And then I got a junk port door. Yeah, that's all my junk. But I'll lead them right through here, up and hopefully into that door. Is this gonna work? Not sure, but I'm gonna give it a shot. So wish me luck. There's one door. Come around to the back door. Come on. Out you go. Out they go. Out they go. There they go. Alright, chicken's on the loose. Come on. Nope, you're not going there. You're not going there. Keep going. Keep it moving. Keep moving. Come on, chickies. Keep moving. I know. Keep it moving. Everybody together. Everybody together. Don't you stand back. Come on. Keep it moving. Keep it moving. Keep it moving. Come on. Come on, girl. Oh, keep going that way. Keep going this way. Come on. There you go. Come on. Come on. Keep moving. Almost there. Almost there. Almost there. Come on. You can get one and get them all. Come on. Come on, ducks. There you go. Throw them away. Oh, no. Come on. Keep going. Keep going. Come on. Get your butts in there. And now it's starting to rain. But we did it. Got them all in here. They're looking happy. Tons more room to run. They're really going to be happy with this place once they get settled in here. But yeah, those are them. Those are the Indian Giants and one mixed duck. It's half mallard, half big Pekin duck. But yep, there they are. Those are Indian giant chicks. They're about, I want to say they're about a month old now. I got them at two weeks. So they might be a month and a half now. But hard to tell how tall they are, but that's a two by six behind them. So they're standing over a two by six already. So we'll see how they go. I'll come. I'll get you guys an update. Get you guys an update whenever they get settled in here. 
they're gonna enjoy it. I don't know how many roosters I got yet. Our chicks, they're just now starting to show their features of uh, if they're male or female. So I'll let you know. But I'll check on them this afternoon. And get back with you guys, and uh, I'll get them some food and water. Some food. They already got their water set up. So let me fill their feeder up, and I'll see you guys this afternoon. Well, that one looks comfortable, and there's the rest of them. Yeah, I'd say they're pretty happy. Oh, there goes the food. Come on. Come get your food. I'll show you why you need a automatic water. This is literally eight hours of that duck playing in the water. And they are both disgusting. See that one? Go ahead and dump that out. Give it a swirl. And open that again. Their automatic water looks fine. But his bath is full of dirt. So I'll throw that water in there. Just prop it up like that, let it run. All of the chickens. I right, check on the chickens, their food looks good, everything looks fine. Still gotta do the ridge cap on this thing, but hey, another day. I'm about a 95% complete the project. Then we'll get to the other a little bit later. But everything looks fine. I might lower this food dish down some. As you can see, the chickens are not quite tall enough yet, so I'm gonna lower that down and We'll get on with the day. Got a lot more stuff to do. So, but thank you. Thanks guys for watching another episode of Cars and Farm Chicken Build Episode 2. And uh, hopefully we'll get out there and work some bees later this week. I'll show you all about that. So stay tuned and hit that like button.